brothers and sisters, our next speaker is also iconic. Iconic in relation to Scotland and that he stood against injustice. He stood for equality, he stood against the establishment and he was 100% behind the yes vote during the referendum and I'm sure he convinced thousands to vote yes. Please put your hand together for award-winning actor and director David Heyman. Hello. Hello. I think I've drawn the uh, drawn the short straw following Sarah and Sophie, two wonderfully brave, articulate young women, and as Tommy says, they are the future. Now, I honestly wish every single one of you could be up here right now looking at what I'm seeing. I'm looking out at a sea of hope. It's absolutely wonderful. Are we, is, is the, has the revolution started? Yes! Has it started in Scotland? Yes! Are we anti-austerity? Yes! And anti-food banks? Yes! And anti-poverty? Yes! And anti-weapons of mass destruction that set half a long time in the world? An anti-the-morally bankrupt two-party system that has controlled their country for generations. Yeah, yes! Yeah. You know, I'll pay you all a compliment. You're probably all too young to uh, remember this. Oh, thank but in 1955, thank you, the majority of people in Scotland voted Tory. Uh, Believe it or not, it, then by 1997, oh. we'd get rid of all of them. And that was because they ignored us, they betrayed us, they just didn't even see that we were on the same planet as them. That only took us 42 years. So revolution in Scotland may be slow, but when it comes, it's absolute. And then of course, along comes Tony and his white charger, full of all these wee blade eggs. You know, and what did they you know? We had great hope for new labor, didn't we? And what did they do? They did nothing. They did not repeal one piece of Tory legislation. Then they tried to bring in trials without jury. They tried to bring in ID cards. They did bring in fees for students so that those Labour MPs who got their education for free were imposing massive debts on the future of our country. All those young people. Boo, absolutely right. And then Tony and these boys, they take us into war after war and not only killed hundreds of thousands of innocent people as well as hundreds of our own young men and women, Tony and his pal Georgie Podgy made the world a far, far more dangerous place. Disgusting and shameful. You know, and now, you know, Labour are wondering why we're deserting them in droves, because it looks like we're going to get rid of them as well as rid of the Tories. Because they don't deserve our vote. They took us for granted. They absolutely betrayed us. And the thing about being a human being is that every single one of us has as much right to be on this earth as anyone else. And every single one of us deserves a voice. Now we're lucky enough to live in a country where we have so-called democracy. We're allowed, we have free speech. And it's so vitally important that we use that freedom. We put that cross on a bit of paper. And we're about, in a few weeks time, in a cut 10 days, to change the political face of this country forever. Now, you know, as I said, they're all running scared and they don't know why. Because last year they were saying, oh, we love you, don't leave, don't leave. Come and be part of the United Kingdom family. Well, I'm sorry, you know, last year I did a tour of a one-man show all about the referendum and I toured the country and I had a discussion with the audiences after every show and I had English people in the audience saying, oh, why are you leaving us? I said, we're not leaving you. You started to leave us when you kept Thatcher and the Tories in power for 18 correct, years. Correct, correct. You now have hundreds of Tory MPs in England we have won, we have won in Scotland. In England, 22 to 24% of the electorate vote UKIP. 
in Scotland, 2%. I said, you're leaving us, make no mistake. We're still here. We just have a vision and a dream and a hope for a better and more just and fairer society. And we're no threat to anyone, not at all. We're giving people a choice of hope over fear. And it's a no-brainer. We've got to choose hope. The world is going to hell in a banana skin faster than we can blink. We're going to war at the drop of a hat and we're destroying the planet faster than we can heal it. And there is so much poverty and injustice in this world that maybe, just maybe, the five million people of this beautiful tiny country of ours can begin to be an inspiration to the rest of the world and how we can make a new future. How we can get rid of the corruption and the lies of the past. And you know, when we all have a voice and we all put our cross in a bit of paper on the 7th of May, those people that we vote in are political representatives. They are they're the tribunes of the people. They represent our dreams and our aspirations in Parliament. And if they dare cheat us, if they dare lie, if they dare lose us, if they dare turn their back on us, if they dare break the mandate they have with us, the contract that we have with them to be our voice and the debating houses of parliament, then they go forever. We've had enough of morally bankrupt politicians, the posh boys from Eton, sitting in the front benches of both sides of Westminster and dictating to us that we cannot have a voice that is not democratic. Now, we're only talking about a potential 50 seats out of 650. What are they frightened of? They're frightened of our passion. They're frightened of our vision. They're frightened that we might actually bring our, make our dreams come true. Dreams for a fairer, more just society and a far more peaceful world. So, brothers and sisters, take nothing for granted. The opinion polls say there's going to be a landslide. Let's hope that is true, but it's not over yet. Take nothing for granted. There is a silent majority out there that must be defeated. Let us work hard in the next 10 days to make sure we put our cross in the right bit of paper. All of us first. A stronger Scotland in Westminster and a better world for all of us. Yeah! Hope over fear. Yes, yeah, yeah.